donation from Mike and Suki Novogratz, so I believe right here. You should just stand up while this is going. <laughs> Seventy feet long, complete demo kitchen, eight portable cooking stations. The idea is to give kids and adults hands-on cooking experience. And um, we have another pretty exciting announcement related to this. Um, the American Heart Association is commencing a partnership with TED to build five food revolution kitchens in the next 18 months. And the California Endowment have provided a $1.2 million grant to operate that truck in the coming year. So we're really happy at the prospect that this truck's going to be moving around initially locations in California, including Los Angeles, Long Beach, as well as traveling to other high-profile events across America to support the food revolution. Uh, plans beyond this year include developing a fleet of mobile vehicles to increase reach. So, so much happening. It's a pleasure now to welcome back to the stage for a short talk, the man himself, Jamie Oliver. Thank you. Hi, guys. Um, look, okay, what a journey. I've got to do a short talk and I've got to tell you about what's happened in the last year. Let's just go back to the facts, okay? The facts are up here. This is what's killing America. Let's have the graph back, please. Um, a lot's happened. Ted, you guys, you came and you saved me at the right time. Uh, since I saw you last, since getting the award, um, we, we launched a food revolution program. Um, you know, we've got the best ratings for Friday night across all channels in four and a half years, we got an Emmy. Not bad going for a little show about food, right? Now, I'm not, I'm not telling you that to pat myself on the back. I'm telling you that the American public is interested. They want small bits of good information. This is a crime, right? And look at homicide, 0.8%. Look at the red. That's what's killing America. So, what happened in Food Revolution? We went to Huntington, West Virginia, the eye of the storm, the tri-state area, the most unhealthy part of America. I set up... A kitchen there, like the five we discussed a minute ago with the Heart Association, um, it still runs to this day. It's being funded by the local hospital to this day. It's booked out three to four months in advance to this day. We have scratch cooking in every school in that district to this day. Okay? Um, what's beautiful is the town is fixing itself. It's not me, I'm not a superhero, right? Huntington is fixing itself. They've over-delivered in all my expectations. Um, they have farmer's markets. They even have a West Virginian restaurant when there was nothing but fast food. In the neighbouring district, um, two mothers got together. This is one of them, right? Um, they, they wanted it. They wanted it for their kids. Fresh food, cooked from scratch. You know, let's just think about it. 180 days of the year, five days a week, from the age of four to 18. Of course, of course it matters. So she couldn't, wasn't allowed to do it, so she fundraised, and she got our guys to come in, and now they're in transition. This district is twice as big as Huntington's, and they're also putting and rolling out fresh food in their schools. So what I'm saying is, it's moving on. It's moving on. So, season two. Season two of Food Revolution. I've just finished filming. Where did I go? L.A. <laughs> Why? Uh, because it's a media centre. It did so well in the first season. I wanted to spread the word. I wanted to big it up. Uh, we haven't got time to muck about, guys. Also, I don't want it to be a formatted show and go back to the next most unhealthy town in America. No, not at all. So we went to LA, and, you know, let's just put it in perspective. California, I've come here for a strategic reason, okay? It's well positioned. It's one of the most uh, beautifully um, fertile areas in the world, right? And yet, there's still food deserts within eyesight of the Hollywood sign. We're talking about mothers, poor families, that have to get on two to three buses uh, and two to, well, three to four hours to get fresh food for their family. They can spit and get fast food. Fresh food, no chance. Okay, so I came here um, to tell the story about one of the biggest cities in America, the dark side. It's important that we talk about this stuff, guys. If we want progress, we need to interrogate ourselves. So. Apart from being banned from every single school in this district, over a thousand schools I'm banned from, 
right? Um, <laughs> I've been working in fast food. I've been running a drive-thru to tell that story. I've been working in homes. Um, I've been in districts where there's 80% obesity for children. 80%. Have you ever seen what that looks like? 80% obesity in this city. We're talking, we're talking about parents that are livid because there's not even clean, fresh water in school. It's like a third world country, respectively, respectively. So what I'm saying is, this is the time, this is working. Ted, thank you, thank you, I needed you, and you came at the right time. Um, I got into this school, I found a kink in the armour. It's a school owned by the LAUSD that's managed by a partners group. I could get in there as an educator, maths, history, science. Food can go through all of those things, okay? I was there for three weeks before the LAUSD finally got their lawyers to kick us out, okay? <laughs> but that's okay, because the most important thing is my life is surrounded by adults that have let down children for the last 40 years, okay? And what I find incredibly inspiring is children, right? Because these children are bright, eloquent, and they simplify everything to the way it should be simplified. I've filmed... Scenes with these kids that will make you cry and throw things at the TV, right? I've, 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 this school was incredible. And what's really sad is that normally with teenagers, they're indestructible. They're bulletproof, right? I remember that. You remember that, yeah? You remember that? That's not the case. The, the, the epidemic of obesity and, and, and diet-related disease is so mature, it's so ripe in this country that kids are vulnerable. Most of them are vulnerable. What does that mean? It means that they're worried about themselves, their sisters, their mothers, their fathers, losing them. It's infiltrated their lives, right? You'll see this. You're going to see this. Right? And interestingly... Oh. You know, 17-year-old kids, one year away from voting... Right? They, have, they don't know that butter comes from a cow. They don't know where honey comes from. Right? We're talking, they think that jello comes from jellyfish. Okay? Right? And, and it's not because they're stupid. They're not stupid. Adults have let them down for 40 years. Okay? Now, let's just go back to that graph. Give me that graph back on the screen again. Okay? This is the reality of where we're at. And this is very, very reflective of my country as well. Okay? This is not English America. This is a human thing. I do this as a father. Okay? And... I think what's really interesting is, you know, this is the first time that my father's generation has given back a world to us in a worse shape than they found it. And now is the time for change. Now, obviously, looking at these statistics, you think, well, I believe, and going back to the TED wish, that every child has the right to fresh food at school. And food education as a requirement, so they know where food comes from, what it does to their body, and it can help them make better choices for themselves and their family. I, I'm fighting that as a requirement. I believe that this, that, is the next civil rights issue of this country. I truly believe that. I've just set up a foundation um, to help drive the food revolution forward. Um, uh, the idea is we're working from the bottom up. Let's call it facilitated activism. It's going to be big. Everything's really well positioned. Things are moving in all, all the right ways. The world is changing. It is changing, but it's not fast enough. So that's my little update, guys. It's hard to do it quickly. It really is. But I need to reach out to Tedsters again. Uh, I do need help. And I need funding. The next three years are critical. But I can assure you, this is a dream and a wish that will come true. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.